So I have a project set up here with some bass, keys, and a vocal. And I want to add a drum machine to it. Let's see what it sounds like now. This party's not that amazing. Your friends are skin and bones. She can never replace me. A high kiss looks kind of gross. So I've already created a track we're going to use for our drum machine. I'm going to put it in record, send my input to MIDI. All MIDI inputs, all channels. Now I'm using a USB MIDI keyboard, but to see what I'm playing to follow along, we'll go to the view menu and choose the virtual MIDI keyboard. This way we can see over here any MIDI input I play. Now we're going to add a plugin to this track to create that drum machine using Resamplematic 5000, which is a plugin that comes with Reaper or a sampler plugin. Go to the effects on this track, then we'll go to the Reaper plugins and choose Resamplematic 5000. Double click it, and it looks like this. Now we can drag samples directly into this or browse our hard drive from here. But my preferred way is to use the Media Explorer. So we'll go up here to the View menu and choose the Media Explorer. We could also use the keyboard shortcut. Alt Control X on the PC or Option Command X on the Mac, which I'll be using mostly in this video, as it's a lot quicker. Choose it, and it opens up a Media Explorer, where we can choose files that are on a hard drive. Now, these are files that are on my computer, so you're probably going to have your own, but the concept will be the same. And I have mine in the Sound Library folder. So let's say I want to start with a kick and go to my kicks folder and just try out my different kicks. But I already created a folder over here with all the samples I want to use for this drum machine for this song. So I'm going to use this kick sample. And instead of dragging it in, we can create a custom action to do this a lot quicker. Let's go up here to the Media Explorer and choose Show Action List. Or we use the keyboard shortcut, question mark. And that opens up our Actions list. But you'll notice in our section, it's already set up for the Media Explorer. So all the actions in here only affect the Media Explorer. So I'm going to search in the filter for Sample Player. And there's an action right here to insert our sample into the active sample player, which basically means the last one we opened. But instead of adding a keyboard shortcut to this, I'm going to create a custom action. Go to New Action, New Custom Action, and it adds it over here. And then I'm going to add closing the Media Explorer right here. Close Media Explorer window. We add this next. And now, with one action, we add the sample to the last opened sample player and then close the Media Explorer. Give it a name. Hit OK. Now the custom action shows up right here, which is going to insert the sample and then close the Media Explorer in one action. I'll get a keyboard shortcut to it. Now I could use the S key because we're in the Media Explorer section. So it won't conflict with the S key action we normally use to split items. So let's close it. Now in the Media Explorer, I could just choose this sample, hit the S key, and it adds it and closes the Media Explorer. So that kick sound is in this plugin. And by default, it's going to be triggered by any key I hit. But obviously, we don't want that. So to choose which key we're going to use for our kick, just hit that key. I'm going to use C2. Then I'm going to double click right here. The note start. And it puts that key I hit, C2, for note start and note end. So now, if I hit any other key besides C2, it doesn't trigger the kick. But if we hit C2, it does. So now I need to repeat this for every sound or a sample we want. Let's copy this plugin and paste it. So we're going to use a different plugin for each one of our samples. And let's add a snare to this one. Reopen the Media Explorer. I can go to my snares and try them. Or go back to my samples where I already chose the snare I want to use. And just hit the S key. It adds it right in and closes the Media Explorer. 
pretty quick using that custom action. Now we need to assign a key to this one. I'll hit D2 and double click over here. And that assigns it to D2. So now we have two sounds to choose from. Let's add another sound to put on the fours. That's a much bigger hit. Copy paste, go to the Media Explorer, and I'm gonna use this sound. Again, to put it on the four along with the snare. Hit the S key and it adds it to this plugin. We'll give this one a key. Let's make it E2. Double click. Now it's E2. Now we have three sounds. Now let's add a hi hat. Copy paste. Go to the Media Explorer. Again, we can browse to my hi hats. But again, I save them in here. I'll choose this one. Hit the S key, and it puts it right here. Let's pan this one mostly to the left. Give it a key. I'll use F sharp. Shows up right here. Bring the volume down a bit. Let's hear how it blends. Sounds pretty good. Then we'll add an open hat. I'm going to use this one. Notice how long it is. Hit the S key and it adds it into here. I'll hit B flat, double click. It assigns that key. It's already panned. Let's make it a bit louder and hear how that sounds. But notice the open hat doesn't cut off when we play the closed hat. To get that, we should add another plugin. Double click, type in choke into the filter, and there's a plugin right here called MIDI Choke. Double click it, and let's put it before the open hat, and notice it works with note 42 to 46. So if we go to the open hat, turn on obey note offs, now the closed hat is gonna choke the open hat. sounding very natural. Now let's add a tambourine. Copy paste this one, put it down here, go to the Media Explorer, and let's choose the tambourine. Hit the S key, puts it in here. Let's pan it mostly to the right. To balance out the hi-hat on the left, bring the volume down a bit and assign it a key. I'm gonna use C3. Double click. Tambourine on the right, hi-hat on the left. So we play them together. They balance out the left and right side. Let's add another percussion. Copy, paste. Let's add a finger symbol to put on beat four, but every other time, hit the S key, assign the key. Let's make it D3, double click it, and it's assigned to D3. Let's put it in the middle, make it a bit louder, like that. And one more sound. Copy paste, and we'll choose a splash, which we could use as our crash on the downbeat every four bars. Hit the S key, shows up in here, assign a key, use E3, and it's now assigned to E3. Now, if you notice over here, let's close this and reopen it. All the plugins we duplicated are now named based on the name of the sample, making it a lot easier to remember which one is which. But let's record this part. We're set up with our input, but I want to change the record mode right here to instead of record input, to record MIDI overdub right over here. So now it's gonna record like a drum machine where it overdubs instead of replacing each part. So if I wanna play this in multiple passes, I could do it without erasing the previous pass. And I also wanna quantize on the way in. So I'm gonna right click over here, go to track recording settings, input quantize, 
It opens this dialog and we'll turn on input quantize right here. I'm going to set it to 16th notes. As I'm only going to use 16th notes in this pattern. Close it and we're ready to record. Turn on the metronome and let's record our first pass, which I'm going to do for the kick and snare at the same time. But before we do this, let's create a MIDI item. Hold on Control on the PC, Command on the Mac, from bar one, and draw from here to bar nine, and then loop it by trimming it out like this to the entire song. Now it loops every eight bars. Go back to the beginning, and we're going to record into this item. So let's record the kick and snare. This is amazing. And notice before we do this, because we looped this part, it records over here and also shows up over here. So it mirrors the same thing every eight bars. Let's do it again. This is And because we looped it, it keeps playing after I stop recording it. And because we recorded it with input quantize turned on, it sounds perfect on playback. This is she can me. Right on the grid. So now let's record the next pass. This time we'll do the hi-hat. Let's turn off the vocal so we can hear it better. And again, because we recorded it with input quantize turned on, it's going to sound perfect in playback. Let's record the tambourine. Now to record one final pass, recording the big hit on beat four of each bar, the finger symbol on every other bar, and the splash symbol on the downbeat every four bars. So we could do that in one pass. Again, it should sound perfect in playback. Let's hear it back with the vocal. This is Your she can never me. Kiss kind of crazy, So it loops through the whole song. 
And if we want to edit any of these parts, we could double click the MIDI item and we see the whole part right here. We got our kick part, the snare, big hit, hi-hat, open hat, tambourine, finger cymbal, and splash. So we could edit these notes, add some in, delete some, just like that. And close it and play it back from here. And if you really like this drum set, you could open it back up and just save it as an effects chain. Right click, go to effects chains, save all effects as chain, give it a name, save it. And now at any point in any project, we can just right click the effects button, go to effects chains, and it'll be right here. Choose it, and it opens up exactly as we saved it. So our samples and all the settings we set up. And we could save as many kits as we want using effects chains and giving each one its own name. So that's pretty much it. That's creating a drum machine with resample Matic 5000. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.